The sea covers over two-thirds of the planet's surface. Yet we know more about space and the universe than we do about our own oceans. Between the states of Connecticut and New York is the Long Island Sound. A naturally protected channel into New York City used for over hundreds of years. The Sound's rich maritime history has played a significant role in the growth of our country. Join us as we explore its unsung residents and its forgotten history. Welcome back, everybody. This is Captain Dennis with Squalls Marine Divers. Today, we're going to Bridgeport Harbor. We're going to dive on a rock pile called 13A, which was previously a lighthouse called the Bridgeport Harbor Lighthouse that was built in 1871, and uh, they discontinued that in uh, 1953. I didn't find that out until after the dive, but you'll see why that's important. Now, most people wouldn't think you would come across bright colors diving in Bridgeport Harbor, but here you have bright orange. Now, I just do the filming. You guys can do the identifying. This is a foundation to an old lighthouse, and the lighthouse keeper used to live out here. I'm sure this is a great habitat for blackfish. I've seen them here. I didn't get any of this trip. Just swimming along, just kind of looking in between these rocks. In here, it's it's mostly gravel and stone, which is why we've got some pretty good visibility. If you don't have any soft mayonnaise mud, as I affectionately refer to it, it doesn't really get kicked up in the water column. Here's another kind of white sponge that's growing here on the stones. Coming around the corner, I come across this piece of wood and a horseshoe crab. There's a piece of wood there, and it didn't really look like anything interesting. And this uh, horseshoe crab is just uh, grinding his head into the stone. So we'll leave him alone. Now, this again was a lighthouse from uh, 1871 to 1953, and here you can see a piece of pottery with the number three on it. Now, this doesn't look like it's anything modern this is more than likely from the lighthouse itself or the lighthouse keeper might have fell off his boat he might have said i don't want this i don't feel like doing the dishes and threw it in the in the drink here but we'll keep on swimming through here and see if we come across anything else that's interesting these items i've come across on one other shipwreck I wasn't sure what they were. I thought they might have been shells. Turns out the general consensus is that these are old turn of the century batteries. Here we have two more of them. So the, these batteries could have been used in the lighthouse to power the light. It's anybody's guess. Waves will pick these things up and throw them into the riprap, and that's where they stay until my prying hands show up. Now, I don't know if the lighthouse keeper was working out and he got aggravated one day because he didn't do his reps correctly, and this was on the bottom. I mean, this could have been a fisherman using it for a flounder pounder, which is something that disturbs the bottom to attract the flounder and the fluke. But it's 15 pounds of 
fitness just laying down here lightweight easy weight just swimming around here in the holes looking for the elusive tartog or the black fish none so far water is still a little cold here's some more interesting marine growth I don't know if that's sponge or what you can write that in the comments below First we find pottery, and now this. Look at that. It's a piece of plate. On the back of these plates, sometimes you can find a maker's mark that gives you a clue of how old it is or where it was made, and it's always where it's broken. That's a fact. That always happens. This is also a very big fishing spot. Obviously, there's a lot of structure here, fish-like structure, black fish, striped bass, flat fish. So, some people like to have a little uh, cocktail or two or four when they're fishing, and sometimes they throw their bottles over the side. Um, this doesn't look too old. It's a flask-type shape. It's got a screw top. So, uh, it's just a cool bottle. This is nice. I knew what this was the second I saw it. This is a dive weight from a weight belt from a diver who, I don't know, either disconnected their weight belt and it just got loose or this fell off a boat. I don't know, but uh, it's mine now. Now, to the untrained eye, this may look like a regular stone, but this is actually an engine. A salvage captain told me that a ship sank here, caught fire and sank, and this is the engine that belonged to that boat. Just kind of looking around here and I came across a small piece of coal, which is right here. And I don't highly doubt this was a steam engine, but I'm no engine guy, so you got me. And here we are as I make my way back to the boat. We come across this guy. Mr. Fluke or Mr. Flounder, I can't tell because I can't see his teeth. That's everybody tells me, oh, Fluke have teeth and Flounder don't, ah, uh, whatever. And here we can say hello to the Port Jeff Ferry. Hello, Ferry. Thank you very much. Uh, be sure to check us out at SquallsMarine.com. And until next time, I'm Captain Dennis.